We have our webinar here today about the black ice, as you know. The last, it's our second webinar. The last one we did was the Paraiba. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just had a question from a, a colleague today saying what, what happened with the Paraiba. He wanted to order one, but you have more news here. Yeah, that's a tricky thing. So the Paraiba is, um, we are going to produce right now the absolutely latest pieces out of that uh, limited edition of 50 pieces. And uh, everything is sold from Chronoswiss. Uh, we're going to deliver them now to our partners uh, the latest pieces. So if someone is interested in a Paraiba, then uh, get in contact with us. We might can uh, still find you one. And uh, But it's, it's already a rare piece. Very successful launch. It's just for the information. Mm -hmm. As last time, we, we're going to now enter into the Black Ice, which is our main watch for the next couple of months. Uh, and we want to get you all the details you need. Uh, here again, as uh, we normally do, we ask you to ask questions while we do the webinar so we can respond to you uh, directly on whatever uh, question this might be. And with your help, we already uh, noticed that we have no sound. So we see your questions and, uh, and try to answer them uh, immediately. So um, the inspiration about the black eyes, would you like to show the watch first and then? No, we can, we, we can talk about the inspiration. Uh, I think uh, you have one story. You want to yes. tell this one? <laughs> Michi, I mean, uh, regarding sound, can we uh, get a bit of sound here? What was uh, one of the inspiration elements for the Black Eyes? Or, uh... So the inspiration for, uh, for, for the Black Eyes uh, that came from Mike is actually that Black Eyes album he was listening last summer when uh, shortly before the summer vacation, uh, he was sending us um, a sketch of that black white watch and uh, sent us the the, the 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 wishes that we have good uh, summer vacations and then we are thinking what what watch is that that's really super cool and um yeah well it we we need to explain sometimes uh, when we have a lot of discussions on a design mike our designer goes into his bureau and listens to heavy metal music to <laughs> to get a new design and uh, i think which when is he more his taste this, than ours Let's yes, well, <laughs> <laughs> but this is the way how he reacts to it yeah. when we have too much discussions on a, mm -hmm. on a dial. And then he came out with this new rendering with these black eyes uh, where we tried to have all the parts of the watch in black, but in different uh, finishing, in different uh, lacquers, in fish, uh, different uh, uh, looks. And um, for him, it was black eyes, but it, it was so nice when we looked at it because also the structure of the main dial looks like a winter lake, a frozen winter lake with black ice crystals on it. And that's how we came about the, the, the name. So there are two ways um, about this. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll have we a show look. the watch. Yes, I think okay. we, we have a look Let's at the have watch a look again. That super cool timepiece. So this is our black ice, and you can already see the structure that I just mentioned uh, is a uh, looks like an ice structure and it's all coated in a, a black DLC. Like an ice structure without uh, snow on it. So, Yeah, but I think for, for those who, who, who like to, to walk uh, in the winter next to lakes, you, you, you know this structure, you know, you have the wind blowing over it and then you have these ice crystals which pop up. The, uh, the watch is um, the nice thing about this watch is it's all kept completely in black, apart from the supernova hands and uh, the, the, the blocks that show you the, the time during the night. And you can already see here that we talk about uh, many different shades of black, many different uh, textures that we used, but all uh, either lacquered or coated in black. And I think this makes this a nice combination and also gives this nice um, constant look uh, throughout the watch. I quickly turn it around so you see the black case, which is a DLC case. It's a matte DLC. You have the satinage on the side. It's a satinage in black DLC. And then on the on the back side, you have the black rotor and also black DLC outer case. And this uh, correspondence uh, 
perfectly with the with the with the black strap what we have on that watch with um that neoprene strap and um yeah shall we go a bit into the details of the watch uh, of the details uh, of the parts of the elements of the different elements yes i think that's a good idea just checking if, if there are any questions but mm -hmm. uh Thank you for your comments. Uh, yeah, I think the idea today is uh, to, to get you more uh, into our story and how we, we design a watch and mm -hmm. what are the main elements to it. And uh, here we say we want to have a watch completely in black. And uh, let's start from the outside in. So yeah. we look at the, at the case first and all the outer parts. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as I said, I think the important thing was it should have been a completely black watch. Uh, okay. So, so we turn the camera to uh, the elements what we have here. We have laid out, so, and we see the black case here, which is a DLC case, and uh, as you already saw before, it's a. Uh, Instead of having a, a polished case and then um, coated with a DLC in black, we decided to have a matte DLC. And the way you do this is we use a sandblasting procedure on the steel and only then coat it in black DLC. Uh, the, the case consists of different parts. So the, the satinage on the side uh, is done in the satinage way, but then coated. And uh, an information about the DLC. DLC is uh, the, the short version for diamond-like carbon. Uh, like diamond-like carbon. And uh, the, the hardness of this is about uh, 4,000 wickers. And just to give you an idea, in comparison to steel, steel has about 300 wickers. So they're definitely um, harder materials than this, but it's it's certainly something which is um, more scratch resistant than stainless steel. Very much so. I think uh, the first time we used it is about 12 or 13 years ago, and uh, the, the diamond-like carbon uh, procedure comes from NASA originally. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have known that, but uh, they use this for the space shuttle. So all the plates, when they re-enter the, 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 the Earth and it gets really, really hot, the plates are covered with DLC. Mm -hmm. So that's where it comes from. And I think 12, 13 years ago, it was the first time it was used also in the, in the watch industry. Okay. It's a very nice procedure. To go back, uh, the back case, um, here we decided to use a satinage. And I, I tried to get it in focus here. So the back case, uh, here you see it now. It's a satinage finishing and then also coated with DLC. So. We have two to three different structures on the case alone. The outer case uh, in terms of uh, different uh, finishings and different uh, black shades. Then uh, we go to the inside just quickly. This is the, the movement holder where you have a perlage on top of it and which is also uh, done with a black DLC afterwards. So it's a satinage and a perlage and done with a black DLC. So I just wanted to show this because people sometimes say, well, well the, the, the watches look nice from the outside. What is happening inside? Uh, we even do the uh, movement holder in a black DLC. You don't see it unless you're a watchmaker and you open it. Uh, but I thought this is uh, nice to let you know. It's, uh, it's also about the inner um, uh, work and the love to the details, which we which consists in all the Crown Swiss watches. Somehow we have to show the most or one of the most important elements of our cases uh, that is uh, not yet showed yet. You have it in your hand, so the crown. The crown. If I get so this focus. is the iconic Chrono Swiss crown, um, as well in that DLC coating here. Yeah, as well. The procedure of DLC coating is uh, quite intensive because for those of you who know how it works, uh, it's, uh, it's an implosion procedure. So you have to basically hang up all these 
a single elements into a vacuum chamber and then you you get it um, um, uh, you sh get the shots of the DLC uh, on it in this vacuum chamber. So everything has to be nicely prepared before you can actually coat it. Oliver, you had that iconic crown in your hands. Can we quickly discuss maybe that a bit? That crown. Um, so yeah. um, certain people say, ah, that crown is a bit too big. And uh, others, they say, that's just the perfect crown. Um, what, what is that crown meaning for you? Because it's one of our iconic key elements for these timepieces. Um, well, you, you know the history of the crown, right? It, it goes back to the almost 100 years ago when when uh, when pilots etc needed to use the crown uh, to to change their the, the the time when they were flying over a certain point so they used the the watch actually to to reorganize and and get their planning on on the mm -hmm. on the map uh, so you used to have big gloves so mm -hmm. apparently uh, due to this you also had to have a big crown yeah. Uh, to get it touchy, to get the feel to change mm -hmm. the time. And uh, when we started with Chrono Swiss, this crown was always omnipresent because this is also a very classical yeah. element of, of watchmaking. And up to today, we keep this crown. We have changed it over time, yeah. not, the, not the shape, uh, but the size, yeah. depending on the watch, because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it might be a bit big as we use it in the, in the past. Uh, you have a nice example here uh, on, the, on the resec. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it, I think it's a nice size. And people sometimes ask, is it, uh, is it comfortable to wear? It's super comfortable and to wear. So because really of the yeah, shape. Yeah, absolutely. Because of the shape, yeah. it's more comfortable to wear than many, many other crowns. It's absolutely not hurting. Yeah. And uh, function-wise, and to handle the crown is probably one of the best crowns uh, on the market. So I, yeah. I, I really feel that I never had a better crown to manipulate the watch than uh, than this one here on the wrist, and and the comfort of the crown is exceptional. That is really something what you can what and, you can and say. And then as well. at the same time, uh, it's it's uh, it's one of the crowns with uh, DNA. Yeah. I think uh, you see it from far away. Okay. It's always the same on your crown. Absolutely. So, so we use it on all the watches, and this will be happening forever. <laughs> so it's as well for you as the owner of the company. It's something really super meaningful that we have that crown, right? It's technically meaningful, yeah. but also in uh, from the point of, of uh, our history and mm -hmm. uh, uh, from the point of uh, uh, having a, a, an element that is typical crown Swiss, this is almost our brand icon mm -hmm. okay. for, for the watch. So I better put it back on because uh, it's really comfortable to use. Okay, so we go back to... We go back to the, to the outer parts. Uh, you already mentioned uh, the the uh, the neoprene strap yeah. uh, he also we try to use a matte kind of color so it fits with the rest of the watch uh, but here again it's a it's a different black uh, we counted over 25 different shades of blacks in and around the watch and uh, this was what makes the black guy so so special mm -hmm. Okay, and then the buckle as well. Also the buckle, uh, DLC coating. it's a DLC coating here again uh, with a bit of a, of a different um, uh, matte color, but all going tone in tone uh, with the strap and with the case. But uh, this way we just wanted to, to explain sometimes uh, a watch is not uh, just two, three different parts that you need to fit together. In our case here at Chrono Swiss in particular, it's it's about getting all the details together and uh, that's why mike sometimes listens to acdc music to get to free his mind because these discussions we have while designing a watch um, we're talking about in, in this particular case about 25 different black parts that we have to combine with each other uh, still trying not to get a nervous watch but getting a black watch with the depthness in it and around it, uh, which makes this uh, particular timepiece so so special. These were only now the outer parts, right? And, and there is actually something, uh, the screws we don't have, right? Um, the, the screws, screws we there, also have. Uh, we have the screws that are uh, holding the, the elements for also the, the, the strap. So this is uh, as well one of the iconic elements of Chrono Swiss is that we have 
um, screwed or screws for the, um, uh, for, the, for, the, for the straps to hold them. Yeah. And there as well in that uh, DLC coating. If you can see so, them here, yeah. Now we yeah, have but here, the... right, uh, you're right. I mean, even the screws are in DLC coating. And uh, also every single screws has to be DLC coated, has to be hanged up, has to be uh, shot at, and so on. Yes. Yeah. So... Sometimes we get um, the um, we get the comment that a strap on a chrono is a bit challenging to change. That's right. Huh? It's a bit. Uh, it it takes more uh, attitudes or it takes more um, responsibility and more knowledge to change a strap on a chrono Swiss. But it's as well an important part for us that. We have that super safe and patented system um, that holds our straps. So uh, it's as well something what we are going to keep. On I think we never lost this. a watch, if you uh, want to <laughs> say this. That's certainly the case. Huh? Uh, OK. So we have now the, the outside parts of that uh, mm -hmm. black ice. And uh, shall we jump a bit into the how the dial, which is one of our it's actually not just a dial, it's a, an element of the movement. Um, exactly. How that is going to uh, um, be done and how um, these elements are looking like. Here we have the question, the crown is a defining feature of the brand, like the Cartier Pasha. Yes. A nice comment, yes. Um, the Miguel de Sousa, the comfortable, yes. Uh, all the straps um, which we put on our watches, we try out personally, either Beard, me or or Michi Setz, who sits here in the back doing the, the technical stuff. So we, we try this out because I think uh, it's like driving a car, whatever you want to know that the, the wheels you have on, that they also fit and that they work. So everything from our perspective, they are very comfortable. It's the first time we have the neoprene strap. Mm -hmm. uh, in, it was a trial. We, we, uh, we think it's very comfortable to wear. Of course, as every strap, uh, you need to wear it one or two days until it gets nicely bended, etc. But uh, it's it's uh, it's it's very very soft and and uh, nice. It also often depends on the on the inlays here on the side, uh, what you use. If you use leather or if you use a, a kind of a plastic, uh, so this is an important part to to discuss in our design briefing and in our technical briefing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Talking about prototype straps, uh, just made a little change on my watch today. So first time you can see it, but we, we're not going to show it too much to the audience. <laughs> For next time. Yes. So you say we want to have a look inside the watch. Yes. And uh, you already said that our dials are not uh, only dials, but in our particular case with the open gear, our dials are part of the movement. And uh, I, so if, that... if you see the whole, uh, you see these different compartments. So all these compartments are the pieces that we need for the dial. Uh, we didn't took apart all the pieces because otherwise we would have too many compartments. But here we have the base dial, which is this black DLC uh, uh, breast uh, part, but already here we have mounted the outer ring and we have mounted the super luminova blocks and we have mounted second retrograde second uh, 180 degrees ring plus uh, everything what is necessary for them to hold together. So only here we're talking about 17 parts which are already put together. Then here we have the hour ring. Here as well, you have these little super Leonova blocks. They're made out of ceramic. Huh? Out made out of ceramic. Yeah. So before we get this piece, we also have to put the super Leonova blocks in it. So only this piece that you see here consists of 12 pieces, 11 rectangular super Leonova blocks plus the hour ring in itself. Then here you have these little wheels. They, call, they make part of the open gear movement. So these wheels are then set onto our dial here, 
making the whole mechanism or part of the mechanism working as a, a regulator watch. So there, these um, these um, wheels are connecting the hour cube with the hour hand. Then finally, correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then you have the bridges down there. We have the bridges, which are the also mounted uh, then on, on the wheels. Here again, you see the bridges, which uh, are shown in, a, uh, in two different colors. Uh, we have a black matte color, and we have a black uh, polished color. So even the bridges have two different shades of black. Oliver, how about if um, we, in the meantime, show as well the watch that we can uh, see a bit yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. where the position of that element is? So. so now we go back to the real watch again. Uh, you see now here the bridges. Yeah. And the wheels would we ever and the wheels you see before. here. The hour wheels that are connecting to the minute hand. Open gear because you really see into the dial and certain parts of the movement are actually constructed onto the dial. So it's a technical dial, not only a dial. And the overall dial consists of 55 parts as we have counted today. Mm -hmm. I hope I didn't make a mistake, but we're talking about many, many parts uh, making out this very special dial. And a lot of the complication of these timepieces is on that side, you every day watching. Uh, or looking at your watch. So it's uh, it's the most interesting part of our timepieces is actually directly always visible. Absolutely. I think it's it's a technical watch and, and mm -hmm. it's beautiful to see what's happening. on. It's the a watch. modern mechanical yeah. watch, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then we had these charming red rubies um, seen oh, on the dial. Um, we go back. Can you explain them a bit? Also, these little parts uh, are all mounted on the dial. Uh, we have these little, I, I, I call them um, hate watchers. They, they, they watch, they make sure that the height between the dial and the bridges are kept in the right place. So we have four of them. Then we have these rubies, uh, which you use below the bridges, making sure uh, that they are holding place and that the, the, the I say, Stöße. Uh, a shock the, 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 the shock yeah. resistance also is, is taken yeah. well care of. Mm -hmm. um, these are the little. Let me see if you can see them. These are the little uh, screws that we use to. To uh, these three screws here are used for the hour ring to be mounted, and then you have this type of little screws that we use to mount the bridges and the wheels and so on. So I thought this is a nice way also of showing you uh, how and with what parts our watches are made of and how many watches are actually consisting just on the dial. So uh, this little box came directly from the atelier from uh, Karin today and we have to give it back to her this evening, oh, well, uh, she doesn't see us. She's not here. Yeah, no, because um, we have to assemble uh, that watch um, later this week uh, because we're so short on uh, these watches that uh, we. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you told me the story. You talked with a supplier this this morning. Some of our parts are, are lacquered, and uh, maybe you want to tell the story quickly. Yeah, it's, it, it's it's a charming story. So we all know that we have at the moment. Um, not really the warmest and not really the driest weather. So it's a lot of rain, a lot of thunderstorms. Uh, and we just got the information and it, it shows that there's so much handmade on these watches as well, that they have at the moment the issue that they have to lacquer the dials at night because at night they have a bit a, a less humid. wet, humid environment than during the day and they get in air and that is too 
humid for the moment. Yeah, and you, you get spots on the on Yes, the and uh, so, so they cannot really lacquer the dials. So luckily we have all the 50 dials for our uh, limited edition of 50 pieces, but that is just um, a charming thing from uh, you know uh, that's, out from, that's from watch, the, the Jura and yes. out from the watchmaking industry. That's watchmaking industry. There's so much handmade on these time pieces and um, yeah. watchmaking as it purest. So Absolutely. We're happy not having this problem with our watches. They're all lacquered. We have the lacquer at night. We do the assembly. How is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, yeah, um, that is actually a watch I want to wear as well. Huh? And I already I can told imagine. you that uh, <laughs> during Watches and Wonders when we had launched it. And uh, so you can put a reservation, but I think first we we try to see I that our end consumers. Uh, yeah, are I know that I will not get one. <laughs> getting so happy. So, okay. Yeah. Um, Maybe a, a quick intro to the dial. Uh, and, and the way, because we always ask how you do these dials, yeah. and, and we're not going in too much of details, but uh, we wanted to show the steps just in how our base dials are, are, are made. And uh, we, we start with the uh, with the brass that we use. And uh, so this is uh, all, by technical drawing, this is CNC cut. Um, that's the base. This is also the base when we do the guilloche. In this case, we didn't do the guilloche, but we decided to have uh, a special structure on it. The structure that, that you have seen on the on the watch, which is, is this uh, uh, black eye structure, right? And in order to get to this black eye structure, you, you wanted to say something? Yeah, about? I mean, can you, can you uh, stay a moment on the holes you have on that dial? I mean, how many holes do we have on that dial? That's just impressive. And it just shows that it is an element of the movement, and it is not just actually a dial. So everything on that dial is really the base to be a functional element of that watch. Yeah. OK? No, you're right. I mean, this is so element elementary for us. We, we see this every day, but I think for our viewers, uh, this is a very nice example that they are more complicated than what you actually imagine. This is a complete part of the movement. We're just getting back to that. So we get um, a question from Rainer. Uh, he asks if we can reserve a specific limited number. Uh, just get in contact with us. Uh, send us an email on lucerne at chronoswiss.com. Maybe we have uh, the, your contact in the, yes, in the system. Maybe. And then um, we're going to check what number is might still available um yeah a lot of these you're, you're, you're the man of the numbers i, okay. I don't get into i will ask tanya then uh, <laughs> if uh, there is something only 50 pieces we got a question um from jean if um, there are just 50 pieces available yes it's a limited edition of 50 pieces good okay Going Thank you for these questions. Uh, if there are any further questions, we're going to respond to them uh, directly. Going back to the dial. Huh? So how do we come from here? Uh, it's obvious how we get into a guilloche, but in this case, we have this special black ice structure. And um, to get here, we decided to have a, leather, a, a laser cut base. So we have a part that is laser cut, uh, resembling this black eye structure, and then it's pressed. pressed. So all of these dials are pressed by uh, a matrix, which has been laser cut and then applied on these dials. They normally look like, like this before. And then we galvanize them. And so this galvanic dial was actually the prototype dial. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided between two different lacquers. And um, well, I, I think this, this was the final one. I think we talked about many more different lacquers. <laughs> uh, th th that's right. It was the, 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 the last one where we decided between yeah. 
it was and, actually and the final. Actually, to, to not oh. confuse the people, it's it's not a, a lacquered one; it's a galvanized one. Yes, but it's a lacquer which At is the over the galvanic. Uh, correct. Yes. Correct. And that was the, the, and, the difference uh, between these. Uh, and two. here we have the sapon semi mat. That's what we used. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's the, the 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 part down here that we decided that we're going to be using. So here the almost all the parts inside the watch are galvanized. So classic galvanization that we used here. And then um, before the finishing, we used some sand blasting just to make sure the the overall structure of the watch is nicely and, and evenly uh, done. And then at the very light step, we used a sapon mat, so we used a lacquer to to get the the, the finishing uh, the final result. So here we have about five steps until we get to this uh, structure of this black ice. Okay, let's show the final result, and maybe we have um, that we can really see how it how it looks like, and maybe we can compare it to. Uh, let's say a bit the sister watch, uh, the very first we did with that technology, um, mm -hmm. the, the chocolate, what we have launched last year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just to, to, to show how it looks different with a different color uh, used to that. Maybe if you can show... Uh, we start with the black watches. ice again. Yeah, and okay. Then... So I think once, once you know the story and the different finishing types, uh, lacquered, non lacquered, DLC, um, sand blasted, laser cut. Uh, you understand that we come up with these 25 different shades of black. Now, as, as Beat mentioned, uh, let me show you the chocolate as well next to it. This is the sister watch, which we call chocolate, which is a brownish type of dial done in a similar um, finishing. You might see now with our camera that here it's not so much a matte finishing, but it's a semi lacquered uh, finishing for the, for the red chocolate type dial. Watch and sister watch. Here we go. Okay. And um, we were not so far uh, talking about the night visibility of that watch or the visibility in the dark. So um, it's always something what we like to show with that sometimes 4K it camera works, system. Sometimes it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. work that that good. But uh, just to assure you, the visibility in the dark of these watches is just so impressive. If you can, uh, yeah. So we tried to show you this bit with that uh, UV light. Um, yeah, as Which, we know that it is not really. No, it's sometimes difficult. Showing to show. how cool that looks like uh, in reality. Um, the 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 superluminova for you. What we're using here is a C1 uh, WL um, white glow superluminova. And um, even after eight hours, it's still excellent visible, so it doesn't lose a lot during these eight hours of uh, No, uh, it's, of it's cut out of a big superluminova block. Yeah. It's done by a, by a CNC machine. So um, there's a lot of material, a lot of volume in these blocks, so that's why they shine throughout the night um, so far. There was a question I just... So Benjamin asks how much are the uh, how much the price for this watch is nine thousand nine hundred Swiss francs. Correct. Yeah. Okay. They're already placed on our website. Yes. So uh, all, for all the specification, uh, you either ask us now here, but if you want to know anything more in detail, uh, visit the, the Crown Swiss homepage. Everything is uploaded, uh, also with some nice pictures. And uh, if you still don't find the information needed, uh, give us a shout and Beat or me or anybody of our team will reply to you uh, within a short while. 
So, um, yeah. This has been the black ice. I think we talked about the, the, the inspiration uh, that we have here. That's, uh, anyway, that's our atelier. That's where we really basically sitting in the middle of Lucerne, where we talk about the watches, where we dream about them, and where we have our ideas and our sometimes not so easy talk until we get to the design we want. Talking about the atelier, yeah. um, Tom asks if we are open uh, during the summer vacation or uh, during summer for a visit. Um, of course, some of us are going into a vacation as well, but we're never closed. So always there is someone uh, welcoming you at our atelier. And the best is actually to give us an email or a ring that we can do an appointment and that uh, we reserve enough time to show you around uh, in our atelier, to show you everything, to show you the guillotine machine, to show you how we're assembling the watches and uh, respond to all your questions. Uh, so send us an email um, or a phone call, give us a phone call and uh, we're going to be uh, here for you with greatest pleasure. But, but yes, we are open and basically you can also just step in. That's the idea of our atelier here. We construct the watches, but we also, we have a door just in the middle of Lucerne. You walk in, you ask us. Of course, it's better if you give us a bit of time so we can prepare it even better, but you're welcome anytime. So it will be our pleasure having you here. Yeah, so. That That's, is... I, yeah, I think we talked about it. Uh, what's also important uh, from now on, I think it's a nice format for us uh, in order to talk about our watches, not only the watches, but also how we construct the watches, how, where our ideas come about, etc. So this is now planned to have these webinars every six to eight weeks. Uh, normally it will be the two of us uh, talking about the new watch, talking about the new uh, finishing, talking about the new complication, whatever. I think it, it's just about watches and you will be informed ahead what the theme will be about and it would be a pleasure having you back here within the next couple of months when we're going to have our new, uh, the, the new webinar, the new next webinar would be about the Skeltec watch. This we know already and we're just uh, getting organized uh, and getting you some insights on the Skeltec. Okay, so there is uh, another question actually going uh, in um, terms of the water resistance of the watch. So uh, there is someone mentioning that uh, 10 bar water resistance is not a lot for a sporty watch. I mean, this Ten. is 100 meters, so to I wear swim, them, uh, dive, whatever. I also wear everything. them for diving. You're doing a lot of sailing with it right and diving and diving as well so <laughs> i never went to I, I seldomly get to 30 meters to be honest yeah. so it, it it works but uh, of course it's it's not a casio uh, super sport watch or whatever so it's a, it's a sporty looking watch uh, it's a complicating watch with a lot of little elements and parts so it's a, it's a piece uh, say of, of of good watchmaking of high end watchmaking um if, if I go uh, really into sports, I probably change my watch. But if you want to go diving, uh, the 10 bars, I think, should be enough. Um, it's certainly a watch that takes you through almost every adventure which is healthy for yourself, right? Can we <laughs> say a, that? That's a, nice, <laughs> that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> yeah. So um, for all our guests visiting us on um, or visiting that uh, webinar here on YouTube, um, make sure that uh, you click below and um, join our YouTube channel. And uh, for guests, they uh, were following us on um, on that Insta on that webinar on Facebook. Um, make sure that you follow us on Facebook. That you never uh, or that you always get. Um, if you want, of thumbs. course, of course, that would be charming. But I think most most important is we, we show again uh, your, your contact details in case somebody. I, I saw some people had some questions about mm -hmm. the watch, etc. And um, Bert, I think uh, normally it's most easiest when 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 they just call you up or they write you an email, mm -hmm. and and uh, we can get back to them. Uh, we trust. Uh, so okay. Yeah, so all the information are directly available on our website. Uh, so 
that's uh, yeah here we have it so there's my telephone number on it and all the contact details uh, you need to get in contact with us so that's uh, you either noted here or even you... if I'm in vacation I will take your phone call or respond to your email so excellent so thank you very much we are looking forward having you soon again once okay. again we apologize for that little delay uh, which gave us a little little headache uh, the first couple of minutes so yes <laughs> my, my heart was beating a bit higher than normal <laughs> than usual but I think we're, we're prepared for next time yeah. unplug it and plug it again it works it's all about mechanics in the end okay good thank you for watching thank you for uh, watching bye. and until next time thank you bye bye <laughs>